In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. We gather together for a feast that the main hymn of the feast describes as something which proclaims joy to the whole universe. Imagine the best news the world could ever hear. Imagine what the ratings would be like on cable news. Imagine those who would come together if it was something joyful about God's salvation, how the churches would be packed. That's how joyful the event that we celebrate today. Not just joy for those gathered here, not just joy missed by those not gathered here, that's this here, not joy for the whole world, joy for the whole universe. Our most powerful telescopes that are still peering billions and billions of light years ahead still can't see the end of the universe, but today's feast proclaims joy even there. And what is that feast? Pictured so humbly in the icon, a little baby was born. A lot of parallels between this feast and Christmas, because like the feast of Christmas, today we celebrate the coming of salvation. That the one who would give birth to Christ receives birth, is given birth to him. We explain, he said something so amazing in one of the final hymns of Matins. We said, only through the Virgin Mary was Christ, listen to this word, admitted to the created world. She admits the Savior. And today we celebrate her admittance into the world. You know, we celebrate it because for us it's a feast that happened in the past, 2,000 years ago and a little more. For those that did not live to see the day we celebrate, it was in the future, in a day they couldn't know when it was going to come. And think about the events and the people of God that came and went without the coming of this feast. Think about in the very beginning at the Garden of Eden. We heard about it prophesied in the Matin service. That the one who is born today begins to fulfill the promise from Eden that one would come to crush the power of the one who brought sin into this world. And that was a future event. So Adam and Eve didn't see this day that we celebrate. Those gathered together and confused at the Tower of Babel, having gone from a world where everybody understood each other, where their power was so great, God said, we have to confuse their tongues, or anything they set out to do, they're going to be able to do. That's how clear they could communicate. And they wake up one day and they can't understand each other. Imagine the confusion. Imagine the fear. And waiting for someone to come and fix it all. They waited and they waited and they died. Waiting. We saw horrific images of flooding in the last few weeks. Imagine those who were around when the whole world was the victim of a flood. Not just one mighty city, the whole world. And they all watched those waters rise and rise and rise. Perhaps they fled to the mountains and saw the waters continue to rise even there. And praying for the salvation we see, we celebrate, they didn't receive it. And all the other things about that we know the people of God went through. And they were waiting for the day that we celebrate today. That's the kind of joy proclaims the whole universe that we need to recover. That's the kind of joy that the world itself is dying for and has no idea it's even available. But we're not going to recover that joy if in our own lives, our own struggles, our own waiting for the salvation as we see it, 
for the solution of the problems as we want them solved, if we're waiting for those things and think that God hasn't already solved it all, how are we going to share that joy? All those people in all those generations waiting for a future they didn't live to see, we see it in the past. And yet how often in our lives today we imagine that salvation still hasn't come. So the problems in our lives seem so huge, enormous, and unbearable. Well, then a day like today comes along and reminds us what has already been accomplished. No matter what problems we all face, no matter what salvation we think we're waiting for, it's already come. Why? Because she admitted Christ. She admitted him to this created world. She gave him his humanity. That's what we celebrate. That the giver of the humanity of Christ receives her humanity and she's born into this world. So let's all work not just to be hopeful about a future we hope someday is going to come, not just to work hard that someday we may make it to the kingdom. Let's work to remember the past. As we've come together to celebrate the funeral feast, let's dig deeper. Every year God gives us to enjoy it in this life. Let it sink a little more deeply, the joy that reaches beyond the world that we can see into the entire universe. And let that joy fill us and fill every corner of our own little universe. Let's face it, there's lots of corners in our own personal universes devoid of joy. Let's let that joy permeate not just the physical universe outwardly, the universe within. And that joy and that peace of Christ that passes all understanding can be felt and enjoyed and shared because of what we celebrate today. We thank God that in His providence, He appointed this day. And He appointed the Virgin Mary to be the one to bring our salvation. And to him who chose her to be born today into a world that she would give birth to a Savior, to that God be all glory and worship and honor. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.